Hey guys, what's up? It's Drew. This is part three of Spiritual Nuances. I'm continuing this series because I want to explain to people the subtle nuances that are important. The subtle nuances that are important for you to succeed spiritually and to connect with God in a better way. Okay. One thing that is really overlooked when people are trying to connect with God is the condition of your heart. The condition of your heart, your state of being is very important because in the spiritual realm, things operate in terms of vibration, frequency, okay? Your state of being is important. That's why the Bible says you have to worship in spirit and in truth, because God is too intelligent. God is too vast. God is too wise. He's too all-knowing. He's too all-powerful for you to think that you're going to be able to communicate with God based on lies or based on based on, based on things that are based on uh, uh, fraudulent things, because God knows you. God has God knew you from the womb. He stitched you himself. He knows you. Okay? So the condition of your heart, your heart has to have a, 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 an, a your, your heart has to have some purity. You can't be speaking to God out of pure self-interest. You can't be speaking to God out of um, you can't be speaking to God out of the desire to manipulate his power, the desire to control his power, because God will see through it in two seconds, probably half, no, no, in a millisecond. God, was, God will see through it, and he will most likely ignore, your pre, ignore what you're saying. Since God is slow to anger, and that's one of his personality traits, that's one of his characteristics, he's most likely just going to ignore you. He, he's, he's not going to punish you necessarily because of where your heart is at and because of what you're trying to do, but he will ignore you, okay? Now, some people are like, okay, well, why is it then, why is it that then when they engage in witchcraft or when they engage in uh, divination, when they engage in these things that they face consequences? The reason for that is because of the nature of the spiritual activity that you're trying to engage in. Witchcraft, divination, all dirty forms of spirituality where, where you are given the illusion of control, give you the illusion of control so that your soul can be possessed and so that your spirit can be controlled. Because you can't control spiritual beings. They're, they're higher than you. Even the demonic ones are higher beings than you. You can't, you can't control them. All you can do is have the illusion of control. But usually, in order to gain that illusion, in order to, to maintain that, you have to give up part of yourself. You know, the medium that approached me years ago, she always complained of being tired. She always complained of feeling physically drained. So in exchange for the sapping of her soul and her sapping of her energy, she was granted these medium abilities that she tried to make money off of, okay? Now, typically the consequences that come with engaging in certain spiritual activities are inherent in the actual spiritual activity because of spiritual law. Just like, it's like, it's like if you put your hand in fire, you know, is the fire evil? Is the fire punishing you? No, the fire is not punishing you and it's not evil. You're just misusing fire. It's the same thing with spirituality. There are spiritual laws, and if you don't know what they are and you're ignorant to them, you can get burned by using them incorrectly. If you don't know the law of gravity and you jump off of a cliff and you're playing with the law of gravity, gravity is not going to negotiate with you. You're just going to hit the ground, okay? This is not God punishing you. It's just that God, God's authority is absolute. So when God makes a law and when God makes a certain principle, his authority cannot be challenged because the principle of God's authority being challenged and being able to be subverted or being able to be manipulated in such a way throws off the balance of everything else. Like I said, when you think about God, you have to think conceptually and you have to think in terms of principalities because God is the ultimate authority. What he says must go. If you think about it, if, if, if God spoke into existence, the world that we experience, and you as a human being who was also spoken into existence, are able to overcome, overwhelm, or override, but the better word is override. If you're able to override God's authority, why would the oceans listen to him? Why would, the, why would nature listen to him? Why would the sun rise when he says it to rise? God's authority is ultimate, and it has to be for the, for the balance of things to, be, to, to remain balanced. If God yields to you just because of, just because of how you're feeling, then that means that everything else that he has authority over, he, he no longer has authority over. You see what I'm saying? It's like God gave you free will for a reason. People often say, why doesn't God just make this happen, make that happen? Because that would violate the law of free will that God gave us. Why doesn't God just make people not kill, for example? That would violate the law of free will. God wants us to choose him. 
God wants us to, to consciously make a decision to seek him out, find him, and choose him. And he rewards us intensely and immensely for it. That is how it works, okay? These spiritual matters are not as simple as like, oh, you know, I, I, I asked God for something and he didn't grant it so he, he doesn't exist. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Any spiritual entity that can grant you wishes is, is doing so in exchange for something else. They want something else. Spirits want things too. Demonic and evil spirits want things too. Okay? There has to be some kind of... I, I don't know the full nature of it, but I know that there's some